Let's now implement TSNE and in particular use it for visualizing some high dimensional data. I'm going to uh, bring in from sklearn a uh, nice feature here, by the way, if you haven't seen it, called data sets, which has some sample data sets that you can use in your various um, uh, writing of various machine learning um, applications. And I'm going to bring in TSNE from the Manifold uh, uh, library. That's what's going to implement the actual optimization. So we're going to grab this digits data set, which are a bunch of images of various digits, 0 through 9. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just visualize these again, make sure that I can read them, make sure they are what I think they are. So here's the result of visualizing just a subset, a subset of the first 25 digits. You can see I'm just visualizing 5 by 5 in a subplot. So I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it repeats. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it repeats. So what this data set is is a series of images. Um, in all of the, the, and you can see, by the way, they're slightly different. So these are handwritten um, uh, characters. Um, and we're going to see what happens when we feed all of this data into TSNE. Now, what would we like to see from the perspective of unsupervised learning? Well, we'd like to see that each digit occupies a different space in some high dimensional space, pixel space. Uh, these images are only um, are relatively small. I think they're only maybe eight pixels by eight pixels. Um, but so that's in some 64 dimensional space. And if they actually form clusters there, then we have a hope of doing recognition. I can't visualize in that space, so we're going to want to visualize in a lower dimensional space. And we're going to use TSNE to do that visualization. All right, here we go. Let's build the TSNE object. That's this right here. There is a stochastic component to the TSNE optimization, and you can, you can let that just go, or you can fix, fix the random state so that you always get deterministic um, responses. I'm going to go ahead and call TSNE on the digits data, and then this is going to be my 2D representation. I'm forcing the dimensionality to be 2. I could have made it 3. I could have made it 4, although I can't really visualize it at 4. And these are going to be the labels associated with the uh, data. And now what I'm going to do is just plot this two-dimensional representation in X um, with a color coding. So this little guy right here is going to color code everything based on the known label. So I'm cheating here a little bit. Obviously, in unsupervised learning, I don't have labels. That's the point. I'm going to color code them so that you can see, in fact, that what TSNE does is a very nice job of clustering the data. So each data point here in this two-dimensional space corresponds to a single digit, an image of a single digit, 0 through 9, in some high-dimensional image pixel space. I've reduced the dimensionality using TSNE. And remember, TSNE doesn't know anything about labels, right? I, I know the labels because this is a toy example. But when I, what I gave TSNE were the images. And TSNE said, I'm going to look for clusters in this high-dimensional space. The hope is that all the images of the zeros, all the images of the ones, the twos, the threes, and so on, cluster up in whatever high dimensional space we're in, pixel space. We're going to project them into this low dimensional space, and then we're going to learn what the clusters are. So then we can go in and say, ah, here's a little cluster. What are the images that correspond to that? Ah, those are a bunch of ones. Or of course, in a more complex problem where we don't know what the clusters are, we can now start to uncover them. And you can see it's not perfect. There's a little bit of slop. There's some digits that get confused with other. There's a couple things going on here. First of all, we've reduced dimensionality. So we have made the problem significantly harder by reducing to two dimensions. And sometimes a one does look like a seven. There's nothing you can do about that. But you can see here these very nice uh, 10 different clusters associated with the uh, 10 different digits. If you want to, try doing this on PCA, and you will find it is a significantly more challenging problem because the power of TSNE is that non-linear mapping that it's going to do that goes beyond the orthonormal, orthonormal transform. The price to be paid is the optimization is more difficult. Fortunately, these libraries are being given to us these days inside of Python and inside of MATLAB and in, in other uh, programming languages, so we don't have to worry too much. But there is a cost associated with it, of course, a computational cost. And so when you are deciding between these tools, PCA or TSNE, um, linear discriminant analysis or an artificial neural net, you have to start with the simplest tools, see how far they take you, and start adding complexity as you go along. We've talked about two 
uh, dimensionality reduction techniques, uh, PCA and TSNE. There are many, many more. These are representative. The goal here, of course, is not to teach you every possible tool under the umbrella of computer vision, but to teach you these representative tools that you can understand, you can use, and then, of course, use that knowledge to gain knowledge about new similar tools.